All right, well, we're here today with the Reverend Dr. Wendell Nelson, who is our Director of Spiritual Formation. He got his Doctorate of Ministry in Spiritual Formation as well. Has some great thoughts related to the idea of hope and what it produces inside of people. So Wendell, I know that you have got some amazing insights when it comes to the idea of hope and how it affects our whole person. Let's start off with the brain. How does it affect the brain and the human body and our outlook on life? Well, the brain, we flourish when our brain has hope. Mm -hmm. um, hope stimulates the decision-making and problem-solving abilities of the, of the frontal lobes. It stimulates the immune system. Mm -hmm. It motivates us to take action. It turns off the worry centers and our, our worry centers in the limbic system mm -hmm. so that the, 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 the brain can make good decisions and it can, the other parts can fire so we can make rational decisions. Wow, so there's actually a connection between hope in our immune system and hope in our anxiety level. Absolutely. And it all goes through the midst of the brain. Absolutely. That's so cool. Uh, when you think about uh, hope as a process, is it a choice that people can choose to live by or is it a gift that just some people are good at and some people are not that good at? Well, a friend of mine by the name of Brad Hayes started the Fresh Hope Ministry. In fact, we have a Fresh Hope group at our church. Mm. He uh, is diagnosed as bipolar. In other words, he has a mental illness and he is convinced that hope is a choice. Hmm. In fact, um, he says that um, not only is it a choice, but it's something that we can have great certainty and and confidence in. Wow, so you can get better at hope over time. Absolutely. That's amazing. In fact, um, Caroline Leaf says this, thoughts are real, physical things that occupy the mental real estate in our brain. Mm -hmm. Moment by moment, every day we're making choices and they affect, you know, uh, our ability to be positive and to uh, overcome, for instance. In fact, uh, Col uh, Caroline Leaf, when I watched her TED Talk, uh, she has two plants. One is flourishing mm -hmm. because hope is active and the brain is very active. The, the neurons are firing. And the other one is where a person is hopeless and it's, it's, a, it's a plant that's almost dead because nothing's happening and we have the power uh, to shut down if we stay too long in dark emotions. Uh, and the importance of fostering hope and, and seeing hope as a choice and being proactive in it. That's powerful. It's a powerful idea there. Well, let me ask this. If hope is a choice then, how do you begin to foster that? What are the skills that you use to foster that in the midst of a broken world? Uh, doc, Dr. Rapuff says, talks about steeping. In other words, like steeping uh, tea in water. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, would, he said he steeps the idea of that all is well, especially when he's under stress and, mm. and there's adverse circumstances in his life. And he just kept saying, all is well, all is well, all is well. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's unique about us who believe in Jesus is that we know that hope is anchored in the character of God, mm -hmm. someone who is good and loving and involved in our lives. And especially in Jesus, as you mentioned in the sermon earlier. Mm -hmm. And if we can fix our eyes on him and the promises he has made to us, that he loves us and cares about us, um, it just fosters hope within us. And it's, it's, it's a powerful thing. So good. And you could probably steep yourself in scripture or in song lyrics or in one-liners that you really want to grip onto. Yes. There's some powerful ones along those lines. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your theology of sin. Now, one of the things that you talked to me about in your office the other day is how our theology of sin impacts the way that hope comes to play in our lives. Explain that a little bit for us. Yeah, they say as evangelicals, we tend to be very aware of sin in our personal life. Mm -hmm. In other words, if we fail to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, our neighbors, ourself, we know we are falling short and we know we have, it, well, that's sinful and we, we, ask, we confess our sin. But Dr. McMinn would say that um, sin is also, uh, he would say it is a, it's a state and it, it um, kind of is involved in our structures and our systems. Mm -hmm. And as a result, um, you know, uh, when Adam and Eve sinned, he would say, uh, in the garden, uh, 
they uh, not only lost paradise, but all their descendants lost paradise with them. Mm -hmm. And things like disease and death and decay became just part of living in a broken world, mm -hmm. as well as natural tragedies. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would say, rather than attribute all those to God, uh, which would make it difficult for us to trust him mm -hmm. and have hope, that there's a whole lot more going on in the universe. Wow. There's sin that's active, mm -hmm. there's Satan who's active, to create chaos to distance us from God. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kurt Thompson says that um, we have a God who is in the business of changing your story mm. from poor to richer, from harsher to gentler, from rigid to flexible, more sadder to joyful, from shameful to confident and free. This is what God seems to be up to, creating good mysterious things out of messes. That is such a great quote. And we need that kind of quote for times like this because challenging times bring out the best in people, bring out all kinds of different character qualities. And with the coronavirus time, you know, there's never been a time like this before. So I want to ask, uh, what is it about challenging times that tend to bring about or expose hope inside of us? You know, I listened to an interview with doc, uh, Dr. Brene Brown, and she said one of the things she is concerned about our society is that e ever since 9-11, we've been a culture that's been driven by fear, and we tend to shy away from adversity. Mm. We try to protect our children. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they've learned is it's led to teenagers and college students who are more hopeless than previous generations. Wow. And that, um, you know, adversity is actually, you know, a gift to us to forge uh, virtues like hope. In fact, she says, hope is not an emotion. Hope is a cognitive behavioral process that we learn when we experience adversity, when we have relationships that are trustworthy, and when we people have faith in our ability to get out of the jam. An another thing she said is, the most beautiful things I look back on in my life are coming out from underneath things I didn't know I could get out from underneath. Oh, wow. Those moments I look back on my life and think, God, these are the very moments that made me the moments of struggle. Well, Wendell, that's amazing. You've given me fresh confidence that not only can hope be something that we choose in our lives, but that now is the best time for us to choose hope in order to develop it as a, a stronger muscle in our system that's going to bring about all kinds of benefits for all of us. Amen, especially as we engage with others in the body of Christ who are hope-filled people. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much. Yeah.